they've been doing this these type of approvals even in today's climate like you know no if you notice banks are tightening up they're giving out 20 low 5 10k uh, approvals and they're asking for documentation i've never seen a bank that gives out a 60k approval instant approval uh, for one credit card at zero percent I, I just haven't seen it and i don't know how long that's going to last but that can only be done with a Hey, what's going on, guys? Calvin Russell here. Listen, if you all are looking to get the right information about some major changes that's not only happening with Navy Federal, but about business credit, business credit cards, business credit card stacking, listen, this is the perfect video for you. I got my guy here, Toby, and I'm super excited that he actually carved out some time away from his business, his family, just to drop some gems on you guys today. So, Toby, are you with us today, sir? Yes, I'm super excited to be back. It's been a while. Yes, sir. It has been a while, man. I just realized that. <laughs> and let me, if, if you don't mind me saying this real quick, number yeah. one, congratulations on your 100K subscribers. Thanks, man. I appreciate he, it. He set, out, he set out a goal earlier this year. He was trying to get 100K before the end of the year. Done. <laughs> number two, which I don't think you get enough credit for. Yeah. You're the only YouTuber on YouTube that is actively seeking smaller channels like myself That's right. and all everybody else you bring on just to yeah, bring man. us up. So I want to commend you for that. And, and I really appreciate that for, for you always bringing me on um, and helping these smaller channels grow. Absolutely, man. Now, you know what? I'm always humble. You know, when I hear stuff like that, I know at the end of the day, we're all in the grind, right? We're all getting good information out to people. And, you know, a lot of times, like a video like this, I know this video is going to be great. But sometimes, you know, because how social media works, people just look at the views and they say, oh, well, it's not good. You know, and, you know, sometimes it just doesn't and sometimes it's not packaged a certain way or whatever, you know. But again, my audience knows we most definitely were going to deliver. But it's been plenty of people that, you know, like you said, you know, they were maybe a smaller channel or something like that. And now people like, man, like this person knows what they're talking about. So, but that's why we had to have you back, man. But thanks again. We greatly appreciate it. So Cheers. listen, I know you've been busy. Congratulations uh, to your uh, new child as well too, man. How's that been going? It's been going. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a new experience, but uh, it's a blessing. Yeah. So I'm super excited about that. And uh, hopefully I can set aside the tiredness and, and provide yeah. some value to your audience today. That's right, man. That's right. All right. Well, here, we don't want to hold up any of your time. I know my, my audience got their notepads out. Let's get right into it. So one of the things you had talked about or that you mentioned recently was that uh, Chase Bank is giving out a lot of money, but you need to have a business relationship manager. First off, let's break down what that is that Chase Bank is giving. But before we do that, can you explain what a business relationship manager is? If you're looking to get funding for your business with no minimum credit score required, this includes term loans, equipment finance, and even fix and flip loans as well. To learn more, scan this QR code or click the link in the description below. Now back to the video. Yeah, so a business relationship manager, typically uh, before funding companies got into the game, is someone who works with private clients that have typically an average daily balance of 150000 or they have like a million dollars net worth. Mm. Uh, but because funding companies got in the game and started getting people, you know, funding, now they kind of cut the middleman and, and they work with people like, my, like myself to get other clients and bring them business. Um, so basically these are, these are bankers that work with high net worth individuals. Yeah. Uh, they cater to those to get them specific business products. Got you. Okay. Now, and then sidebar, is this type of relationship manager, is this, does this exist with other banks as well? Yes. Yeah. Usually, uh, usually there's business relationship managers at every bank and there's different tiers. That's another thing. A lot of people don't talk about. There's different tier one, tier two, tier three, yeah. and they deal with different people at, at different levels of net worth. So someone who could be doing, who could be doing 1 million plus or 2 million plus or 3 million plus in the business, there are different tiers uh, that these bankers uh, work with as far as the clients. Got you. Okay. Good to know. So listen, audience, Listen, I'm telling you guys, this is why we bring Toby to the channel, because not only does he keep up with all of this stuff, but he talks about this on his YouTube channel as well. So make sure you guys go ahead and check it out, especially for my business owners, because sometimes they have questions in the comments and I'm like, man, I got to wait till Toby comes back you know, for this. So but we're going we gonna to add this into uh, today's video um, as well. That's where a lot of my questions had actually came from as well, too. So now, OK. Now that we know that, how is that working specifically with Chase Bank? Well, I know I, I get a lot of backlash uh, or pushback. I yeah. always preach Chase, Chase mm -hmm. Bank, and I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Number one, there's no other bank right now 
that exist right now in the United States that can give you one credit card that has a hundred and fifty thousand dollar limit. Okay, mm. there's no there's no bank out there. If you know of one or anybody that watches the video, let me know in the comments because there isn't one. Mm. Bank of America they go up to hundred k as a business credit card, but there's no bank right now that's giving out one hundred and fifty k on one card. And there's no other bank right now that's giving out 50, 60, 75 K approvals on one card. There's no bank that's doing that. Right. Yeah. Second thing, they offer 0% interest on business credit cards. Mm. Number third thing, they offer amazing uh, reward points, right? Mm. It's Amex and Chase. They're like tier one, tier two, A, okay. A, A and A plus. So I like to have banks and credit cards that give me the best of both worlds, high, best of both worlds, high limits and reward points. Another thing, uh, that you can do with Chase, you can move limits around, right? You yeah. can turn one credit card from 25 to 50K, 60K. You can move all these limits around. So the reason I preach uh, Chase a lot, anybody I speak with, clients or YouTubers, yeah. anybody I interact with, you need to go to Chase. They have the highest limits. They have the best rewards. They, they have 0% and you can move the limits around. Wow. Wow. Right. And you know what? It's like you mentioned, you're not necessarily promoting chase and i don't look at i don't look at it as a chase promotion i'm more so look at it like okay this is just where the information is you right. know so i mean this is just where the, the perks are now let me ask you this with chase bank because again a lot of people talk about uh in comparison to you know maybe bank of america or maybe truest or of course navy federal which we'll talk about a little bit later um but just you know let me ask you this how long have they been doing this or, or like or do you know when this started or They've been doing it for a while, but it's just getting now that the recently, even with this economic climate, they're gotcha. giving out. But again, this has to be done with a business relationship manager. And I'll, mm. I'll talk about why you can only get 50, 60, 70 K approvals with a business relationship manager in a second. Mm. But they've been doing this, these type of approvals, even in today's climate. Like, mm. you know, no, if you notice banks are tightening up, they're giving yeah. out 20 low five, 10 K uh, approvals, mm. and they're asking for documentation. Chase. I don't know how long this is going to, they're going to keep doing this, but Chase right now is giving out the bag. And I've never seen a bank that gives out a 60K approval, instant approval uh, for mm. one credit card at 0%. I, I just haven't seen it. And I don't know how long that's going to last, but that can only be done with a business relationship manager. And wow. if you want, we can talk about why that's, why that's kind of the new trend. Yeah. Uh, because uh, basically now... The algorithm is the middleman between you and the application. You getting yeah. approved. We're cutting that middleman out. We're going straight to the source. The source is a business relationship manager. And what they do is they take your information on the application yeah. and then they submit that directly to the underwriter. Right? Mm -hmm. That's the difference. When yeah. you when you sub, uh, submit an application online, it's done through an algorithm. Right? It's either approved or denied. Right? So yeah. it's not like it, there's no hack. You you pro, you apply at two in the morning, you're going to get a, no, it's all done through an algorithm. But when you do it with a business relationship manager, they take your application, they give it to the underwriter. Here you go. Here's an, a client that we need to get into our system. They look like they, they're a viable client and they can bring us some business. Mm. And another benefit to that is if you get denied, they can reconsider the application for you. They can make a case. They can tell a story on your behalf on why we need to get this client approved because yeah. they're incentivized to bring in volume. The business relationship manager is incentivized to bring business to Chase, to Chase Bank, right? That's their job, to bring in new customers and new clients. So they're... Yeah. That's that's the benefit of going with Chase and specifically through a business relationship manager. Man, I feel like that's the cheat code, you know, because no, nobody talks about that. You know, honestly, I don't see enough people talking about a business relationship manager. I see people talking about, obviously, business credit, business credit cards, uh, credit card stack and things of that sort. But the problem is, is that it's when you have a relationship with someone like that, someone that's designated to learn more about your business or to yeah. someone that you can actually just ask questions to. You know, and then get some feedback and say, this is what I'm trying to do. This is what I'm trying to do for my business. This is how much I think I need, you know, and then what are my options instead of just and don't get me wrong. There's some great information, you know, out here on social media, whether it's Instagram, YouTube, whatever. But there's also incorrect information, bad information, <laughs> illegal stuff right, that's right. out here. And, you know, and people may get the wrong type of information. And because of that, they'll make the wrong decisions. But yeah, but you said you was going to, okay, you want to talk a little bit more about what that would mean. Like you said, about 70K or something like that with the yeah. relationship. Yeah. How do you do that? Yeah. So, number one, you won't be able, no one's going to get a 60K 
instant approval with a Chase business credit card without a business relationship manager. Mm -hmm. So how it works, some insider secrets, since I have some. Oh, wow. um, how it. it works is, let's say Calvin wanted to uh, uh, get a business credit card with Chase, right? I, I can't give this secret away, but I will say, basically, uh, you submit the, you fill out your application online. It's done all online through DocuSign, okay. right? And then they're, again, they're incentivized, without saying too much, they're incentivized, the right business relationship manager, they're incentivized to give you the highest limits, right? Because they're bringing business into that Chase Bank. Yeah. Second thing, the difference is you get to request your limit. You don't get to, that's the difference, right? When you submit an application, you don't say, oh, I want 50K or 70K or 60K. Right, right. You have to tell the business relationship manager what kind of limit do you, are you looking for for your business. So okay. you would say, "Oh, I want a 60k uh, credit card with Chase, right?" So that's yeah. the difference when you do it with a business relationship manager. When you apply online, you don't have that option to choose what kind of limit you request. It's just yeah. you submit the application and they approve you for whatever they deem your your um, you know that you can manage. But with a business relationship manager, we, you request your limit, which is a big difference advantage because. Most business credit cards, typically like a good bank, 20 to 25 K, right? Yeah. Sometimes okay. 35 K, 40 K best, best case scenario is like 45 K. Anything yeah. 50 K and above has to be done through a business relationship manager mm. to get you that 50 K plus approval. And another thing you can, again, it's all about knowing data points, right? So yeah. place, as I mentioned earlier, they have a, they have the, you have the ability to get 150 K on one card. Yeah. So what you can do, because their threshold, their credit limit exposure for the business credit cards is 150000 So you knowing that, you can go, oh, let me get 50 k on one, one card and then 50 k on another card, right? Or you yeah. could do 75 k on one card and 75 k on the other card. Or you could just do, you could just merge the limits and get 150 k on that one card, all at 0% as well. Wow. Yeah. Man. See, <laughs> that's some good information to know because especially like if someone applies, and let's say, for example, they get denied, they can at least talk to that person and then find out what other options they have. I think right. sometimes people get stuck on like, you know, one particular thing, like I got to have this credit card or I have to have this line of credit or I need to have this account with this particular bank or whatever. But again, once you find out, you know, well, once you essentially create that relationship with the business relationship manager, they'll be able to just hold your hand and walk you through not only what you think you need, but of course what you need and what you can get approved for. And, even, and I'm sure, and I don't know, do you know if they provide information, like I mentioned, like if they get denied, they would give you other options as well too? Yeah. Well, I, they'll tell you why you're denied, right? Gotcha. Number one. And if they're, if they're a really good one, they'll try to advocate and speak to the underwriter to get that overturned, mm, right? Yeah, Perfect example. Yeah. I was working with a client who had a collection yeah. on, on TransUnion. He got initially denied. Yeah. Reconsidered the application with the business relationship manager. He got 25K. Now wow. they advised me, had he not had that, he mm -hmm. would have got 50K. Now what we're going to do is remove that collection. We're going to yeah. double back. We're going to come back and, and apply and, and either ask for 50 or 75K so yeah. we can get him a, a larger limit on that other card. So okay. yeah, that they're they're like you said, their their job is to guide you to the application, tell you what we offer, and and try their best to get you approved. That's wow. their job. Man, that's huge. That that's really that's really good information because you know a lot of people don't know that that happens. Well, for one, I didn't know that happened at that level. With you know, obviously it makes sense for businesses, but like you know, business credit cards and things of that sort. Because when I worked at the car dealership for six years, people just assume they will put in an application. We send it to some banks. Some banks say yes. Some banks say no, and then we just show them the options. But in reality, we would call the banks and say, hey. Can we get more of X? Can we get less of X? Can we get right. this? And where people, you know, would essentially get denied or they would get approved, but they needed to get approved for like three, four thousand dollars more. Right. And then we would I think well, we would call it rehashing and we would call the we would call the bank and say, hey, did you guys look at this or did the computer? Because right. a lot of times to make things faster, um, they just have computers say yes or no and create right. the terms, you know, but that's based on a threshold. But then you have someone, for example, where let's say, for example, they're a 600 credit score, but then like a credit card is maxed out. And in reality, they're really a higher score. They just got a maxed out card. So it's like a computer. Uh, don't get me wrong. You obviously got computers, AI, stuff like that. But you still need a human to make a decision because sometimes there's a story behind something, you know. So 
Uh, yeah. But I, and I think that that's where, again, that's where that business relationship manager comes in, because that also happens too uh, within mortgages. It's there's nothing better than being able to explain a situation to underwriting or have them take a look at something rather than just a computer approval. So yeah. now, OK, now you also mentioned, too, that business relationship managers is the only way or probably the best way to get funding in like today's economic climate or when there is an economic climate similar to that. Why do you believe that? Yeah, well, think about it. Now, banks, this never was the case. Now, banks are asking for documentation on a business credit card. That That is unheard of. For mm -hmm. a business credit card, that doesn't make sense. For yeah. a business line of credit, that makes more sense because that's more risk to the lender because a business line of credit is cash in the bank, right? Yeah. You're approved for 50, you get 50 cash in the bank. A, line, a business credit card is just something you swipe. It's kind of like, you know, made up money. So the reason you need to be getting these business relationship manager, because like you mentioned before, they can tell it's what story you tell to the bank, what yeah. story you tell to the underwriter. When you're not, when you submit an application, you're not able to tell your side of the story. Like mm -hmm. if you're denied, like the client I mentioned before, he was able to tell his story. This is why I have this. I, I've done great. And these other, uh, you know, credit card companies, these other creditors, yeah. I, he was able to tell his story on why he should get that decision overturned. So now it's not good to apply online. It's good to mm. go in the branch, sit down with a business relationship, not a business banker, a business yeah. relationship manager, right? Because they have more pool. They're above a business banker. That way you can tell your story. You can tell them about your business on why you need to get that business product and why you should get approved. You, they're, able to, they're able to communicate better your story as to why you should get approved as opposed to just submitting, you know, submitting the application and let the algorithm decide for you. Right. And exactly. again, they're incentivized to get you approved. Right. Hint, hint, they're incentivized to get you approved. So it's in their best interest to get you approved. I mean, obviously you still need to qualify. You yeah. can't have like 50 late payments, but yeah, uh, their job is to, to do their best to get you approved. If wow. you're looking to get funding for your business with no minimum credit score required, this includes term loans, equipment finance, and even fix and flip loans as well. To learn more, scan this QR code or click the link in the description below. Now back to the video. Wow. Yeah. And I, I think that I think that's key because like you said, they're incentivized to do this. Uh, well, essentially, you know, so it's not like like you said back in the day where it's like, hey, this person applies. Here's this approval, 20,000, 15,000, whatever. And now it's like, hey, we not only are we looking for docs, but we're also here to put you in position to give you whatever you need. Because at right. the end of the day, that's how the, that's one of the ways that the banks makes money. So right. they need people to to walk them through. I, re I really like I think that's a great tool. I think a lot of banks. Should, I mean, more banks should have that, even if it's not for just on the business side, because that's what I mean, at the end of the day. People that get denied, even if it's for an auto loan or a mortgage loan or something like that, a lot of times people don't give good advice on what they need to do. Like, get, tell me what I need to do. What's the strategy? What's the game plan, you know, in order for me to get approved? And that's where that business relationship manager is going to come in big time. So, listen, I'm glad we got you on today, man, because a lot of people have been asking questions, uh, you know, similar to that as well, too. Now, you also mentioned, too, and people, listen, my audience, they love to know any changes that happen, um, especially with Navy Federal. But you said that Navy Federal is making some major changes, especially in their business section of things. So what changes ha are they making right now? Well, let me just make this unpopular opinion because uh, I know I'm going to get hated on. <laughs> Navy Federal is not a good bank for business. Mm. Number one, I'm going to explain why. Mm. When I got approved for their card, their threshold was only 35000 mm -hmm. without documentation. That is not that's not good. I just talked mm. about Chase, how you can get. 50, 60, 60 70,000, yeah. right? On one mm. card. Their threshold was 35,000 on all businesses. So that's that's not good. I, I have the card. I don't like it. Number two, their benefits, their reward points are terrible. They're, they're terrible. Mm. Number three, they don't have 0% interest like Chase does or even Bank of America or Wells Fargo or American Express, right? Number four, now, again, this was years ago. They're not, now currently, they are asking for, your tax returns, they're asking mm. for P and L, and if they do approve you, they give you five thousand. What what are you gonna do with five thousand? You you right. can't do anything with five thousand. Yeah, and then they have business lines of credit that you need to provide all this profit and loss statement, two years tax returns, business tax returns, personal tax returns. They're just not a 
Again, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate in the comments, but trust me, you got to think about this. I want a bank yeah. that gives me all the benefit, high limits, great rewards, 0% interest, right? Because that buys me time as a business owner to get my business up and running where I pay zero interest. And on top of that, I get the rewards so I can travel for free. On top of that, I got the mm -hmm. high limits. The only benefit, which most people don't even, is might go over their heads, yeah. is that Navy Federal business credit card is what we call a ghost card. Mm. They don't report to personal or business credit. Right, mm -hmm. A lot of business credit cards uh, are starting to report to the business credit bureaus, but the only benefit for Navy Federal, other than that, th there is no other benefit. They don't have 0%. Their, their reward system is trash. Their, their yeah. credit limits are not good. Credit limit increases are a hard pull. Chase is not a hard pull for a credit line increase. You know, it's just not good. Like I, I yeah. and now they're asking for documentation. Twenty twenty four, I have a group of over a thousand members, and now they're telling me all these data points where. Yeah. Hey, I applied for the Navy Fed Biz credit card. They asked it for tax returns mm. for a business credit card. Hey, I yeah. got approved, but they only gave me 5K, right? Mm. This wasn't the case four years ago, but that's why I'm not a big fan personally of Navy Federal. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate in the comments. Yeah. But, now, yeah. you know what? I'm glad, but I'm glad, I'm glad you talked about it though, Toby, because, or I will say we don't do, well, not an 850 club, but <laughs> I think that what YouTube, a lot of YouTubers do, especially YouTubers or people that's in social media, they'll keep talking about certain things as if things are the best. And just so we're clear, we're not saying it's not a great account to have. It's not a great credit union to be with, but right. you have personal and then you have business. Right. And I truly believe that majority, obviously, of accounts, usually for any bank, is usually more personal than business. But let's be honest, Navy Federal, no one necessarily uh, says, okay, I'm going to do all of my business with right. Navy Federal. And you're just simply saying, hey, there are banks that have better perks if they have business accounts um, essentially, you know, with these other banks as well, too. So we can't be like everybody else in a sense of, hey, they're the best when let's compare it. And it may not be the best, especially for business needs. And just so we're clear, guys, two things I want you guys to understand. <laughs> Toby is not your post COVID entrepreneur. What I mean by that is that's where people say, you know what? Forget everything. I'm going to start a business. He owns a restaurant. He has other, you know, he has other business ventures as well, too. He's also obviously a part of a group where other people are following this advice and they're getting approved. So he's not just saying, hey, this is my situation. This is just my PL. And then this is my approval based on that. This is him saying, hey, listen, this is based on the people I've also shown how to do this as well, too. And they're getting approved. And and which is a and which is great because everybody's profile is different. And you're able to say, okay. Now we have a worst case scenario. We have a best case scenario. We have an average, you know. So man, that's that's some great information as well too. But I don't I don't think we'll get. We don't. Hey, people always have you know uh, how they feel about Navy Federal. But again, it's from a business standpoint, right, uh, right. you know, as well too. Just and you like talked about that ghost card. Yeah. No. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm no, sorry. Just, go ahead. Just like you said, like there's personal and it is business. I'm yeah. talking specifically for business. That's right. It's, it's just not good. I mean, like you said, pros and cons. Yeah. Pros. It's a ghost car. That, that's really it. <laughs> yeah. The, the pros, I mean, the con is no 0%, uh, no rewards, no high limits. Now they're asking for docs, very low limits mm. uh, across all businesses. So yeah. you can't reallocate the limits. Yeah. I mean, mm. it's just too many cons. Yeah. So, you know, another thing too is it wasn't always like that. So that's, that's another thing people got to understand. This is how we feel based on right now, because that's what's happening right now. Right. But also people have to also understand because things were so much uh, like talked about so much, a lot of people join. And anytime you get a lot of people in something, that's not a bad thing. But the filter is not the same. It's not the same type of clientele. Some people specific go to certain banks specifically to get a certain amount of money with no intentions on paying. And yeah. so because of that, <laughs> let's yeah, be yeah. honest. So we like that's that's yeah. what people are doing. I and I'm that's glad, why they're asking yeah. for documentation. I'm glad you mentioned that. That's what happened. <laughs> people ruin Navy Fed. For exactly that. Now they they did something changing the interest rates on mm. how they're charging the interest rates now yep. because they I forget how many billions they charged off because mm. people were delinquent on their accounts. They're not paying their bills yeah. because they go in there with that with that wrong mindset. That's right. I'm gonna get the money and never pay it back. I'm gonna that's get right. some money and never pay. You burn that bridge, and that's why I mentioned earlier. I don't know how long Chase is gonna have that ability to get those high limits. Because once I say this information or once other YouTubers say this information, people go in there with the wrong mindset and get 50, 70,000 and never pay them back. That's the wrong mindset. And wow. then it ruins it for everybody else. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, we, people have got to change their mindset and, and try to stop trying to run, with the, run away with the plug. That's right, man. Listen, this is exactly why 
we have Toby on at least. We got to have you on quarterly, man. <laughs> For sure, I'm ready. <laughs> For real, man. Just because you know, and and again, because you bring an honest opinion, and it's not like, hey, this is just my thoughts. This is, hey, this is what's going on right now. And right. compared to all these banks, because we're not just this isn't just about you no know, Chase of Navy Federal. It's like, hey, this is what's this is what's working right now. This is what's the best option right now. And it just so happens to be X bank. OK, right. I want everyone to understand that. So but again, Toby talks about all this stuff, uh, you know, on his YouTube channel. So make sure you guys go ahead and check that out as well. Now, obviously, this has been a popular topic even right before COVID hit as well, too. And I'm saying that because. In the last like few years, it's been so many people to kind of talking about, I won't say the same things, but more so just popular topics in general. But it's still good for people to know this type of information, and that is business credit card stacking. Now, people talk about credit card stacking and you know, a lot of different ways. I know people that's got 50 plus credit cards, things of that sort. But you no, know, why would a first off, why would a person consider business credit card stacking? And then, of course, what's the best way to start to do it? Yeah. So why would they consider it is to get multiple products with very low inquiries and try to get a, uh, an amount of, of, let's say, 30, 40, 50,000 in one particular round, what we call a round of funding. So how so so I want to simplify it. Right. Yeah. All our business credit start stacking is is just a set of applications with a set of banks and you know where they pull from, what bureau, and then you do it in a sequence where you limit the inquiries on your credit report. Right. Mm. So, you know, oh, this bank Chase pulls from Experian. PNC pulls from Experian. So you can do three three applications with three banks that pull from Experian or three banks that pull from Equifax or three mm. banks that pull from TransUnion. You want to limit the inquiries. You try to get as many applications as you can, you know, and, and you need to know the sequence. You need to know which banks are inquiry sensitive, which banks are new account sensitive, things like that. So it's just a set of applications in a short amount of time to get the highest approvals and the yeah. lowest inquiries. That's the That's the easiest way I can explain it. Okay. Perfect. Yep. Perfect. Okay. So now let's say, for example, obviously a person is doing this for business credit. Is there ever a limit that you would just have like a recommendation that people like not try to do? Like, I know you mentioned like three applications within a, uh, within a set period of time. Is there like a maximum that you think people should kind of keep an eye on so they don't do it and like, make a mistake on that? Yeah. I, I wouldn't say there's a mask maximum. Okay. Uh, I would say first you need to know, like I just mentioned, which, which bank pulls from which bureau. Okay. Right. Which bank is inquiry sensitive? So it doesn't matter if you have five inquiries, they'll still approve you because they're not inquiry sensitive. So you just yeah. need to know these what we call data points. You need to know these data points from these banks before you apply. You can just apply to as many as you can. And if you get denied, you can still remove that inquiry. So it doesn't really affect you. Um, but to answer your question, I wouldn't say there is a maximum uh, because at the end of the day, the goal is to try to get as many applications submitted all at once or in this particular sequence to try to get the max amount of approvals in that short amount of time. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yep. Man, man, greatly. We greatly appreciate you dropping the gems, uh, you know, today per usual, because again, people are looking for business funding, business credit approvals. Um, now they know more about the business relationship managers, things of that sort. And, and let me tell you something. If you guys like this interview, you most definitely going to like the, the previous ones that we've done as well, too. Some of that information is still accurate to this day because banks, they change things all the time based on the economic climate, based on, you know, obviously things that are going on in general. And, you know, it has to make sense for them. And so but when you, you have to understand something, when a lot of people do something and it's just like not going the, the way that they want it to or the expected result. Then it's, they're going to change things, and as they should, because right. the clients, the cust, the consumers change. You know, so we, trust me, banks want you to know this information because they want to make the money. <laughs> right, that's, yeah. that's, that's all that's, about money. It's all about money, man. You know, so if Chase Bank did a video on this, nobody will watch it. You know, so <laughs> that's, that's the true. thing, man. Because it'll yeah. come off like a promotion or something. You know, so. Yeah. But either way, man. Listen, th thanks again uh, for stopping by the channel. We greatly appreciate you dropping the gems as usual. Is there anything or any last uh, comments that you want to leave before we get out of here today? Just so we're clear, I don't hate Navy Federal. I just hate Navy Federal for business. That's all go. I got to say. <laughs> there you go. And that's right now because that could obviously change, right, right, right. you know. But here's the thing, guys. And we talked about this. I want you all to think about it like this. Don't get caught up in the name. Right. Get caught. Exactly. No, make sure that the terms make sense. The and conditions. The 
makes it. Yeah, it's got to make sense. Like, and I'll give you guys a perfect example. Look at what we buy now from Amazon. Everybody watching this, look at what you buy from Amazon now. Back in the day, 20, I'll go back 20, 30 years ago. Brand, don't get me wrong, and brand name still matters. But back in the day, some of you guys were like, listen, I'm only buying a, um, a cassette player if it's a Sony Walkman. I'm only going to buy a TV if it's Samsung, right? We were loyal. We were loyal to these brands. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with brand loyalty. But now look at what Amazon has introduced you to. It says, hey, look at this product. It's in the price point that you want it. it look at the ratings. It has everything that you want, better terms, better conditions. And it's, a, it's but it's no, it's a brand you haven't heard of before, but everyone's happy. You, you're more than likely going to go from that. I mean, look, the last 20 things I bought from Amazon, probably two or three things are named brand, you know, versus brands that are now just growing in general. My point is, is don't get caught up in what everybody else is doing or don't get caught up in what it seems popular. Just because it's popular doesn't mean it's going to be best for you and your business. I think that's the best way to say it. All right. But thanks again, Toby. We greatly appreciate you being here, man. Thanks again. Okay. Appreciate it.